In this video, we're going to deal with uh, synthesis of alkyl halides as well as some reactions of alkyl halides in a later video. And what we're going to learn from this video is we're going to talk about the allylic radical. We kind of mentioned it in class already. We're going to talk about uh, allylic resonance forms and the difference um, in reactivity between symmetrical and non-symmetrical uh, alkenes. And then we're going to talk a little bit about rearrangement um, and resonance. So let's jump right in. You remember from uh, our previous conversation when we talked about the uh, allylic radical. So here's the allylic uh, hydrogen here. And here's my radical that's going to abstract that hydrogen. Okay, and if this radical abstracts that hydrogen, I get the allylic radical shown here. Remember, we, we also mentioned that the vinyl hydrogen, which is here in red, does not get abstracted. It costs 445 kilojoules per mole to abstract that hydrogen, whereas it costs 360 kilojoules per mole to abstract the allylic hydrogen. And so this hydrogen is, uh, it comes off a lot easier because this is a huge difference. That's uh, 85 kilojoules per mole difference in energy. So that's pretty huge uh, when you compare the two. All right. So the vanillic or the vinyl radical here, it never ha it, uh, this will never happen. The allylic radical is always what's formed when you have a choice between the uh, vinyl and the allylic hydrogens. All right. So the reason why the allylic hydrogen is so easy to remove if you know easy in relative terms is because when I remove it and I create this allylic radical if I think about it in terms of uh, an orbital system these three p orbitals become what we call conjugated in other words they become a um, a unit right these three carbons become a unit and the three electrons are shared over all three of these atoms let's think about it in terms of resonance Alright, so here's the uh, allylic radical. Here are my arrows showing the resonance. What I'm doing is taking this allylic radical. I'm going to shift the pi bond from here to here. Right, and I'm going to put the radical on this carbon. So this is what the resonance form looks like. Once I do resonance, obviously this line means that these two resonance forms are interchangeable. And, and so the more resonance forms I'm able to make, the more stable that particular radical is going to be right remember resonance equals stability so now let's talk about symmetrical versus unsymmetrical alkenes this is an example of a symmetrical alkene notice the two ends are identical right this is an allylic site so is this so if I react this under allylic bromination conditions I'm going to get bromine at this site or this site notice I have two products drawn here, but it's just to illustrate that it does not matter which end bromine adds from, all right? You still get the same product. It doesn't matter. All right, so now let's talk about unsymmetrical alkenes, all right? So here, this particular alkene is unsymmetrical. So I have the allylic site here highlighted in green and the allylic site here highlighted in red. And, and what I want to point out is that because this is not symmetrical, now I have the potential to get multiple products. So from this particular alkene, I'm going to get two products, right? Here, where this site gets abstracted in propagation, and then bromine adds here in termination. And then here, where this site gets abstracted in propagation, and then bromine adds to this site in termination. So just remember about when we talked about product distribution, you only run across that term when you have the potential to form two or more products all right and so here we're going to get two products and the product that predominates the major product is going to be in this case the product that forms the fastest right for uh, allylic bromination the product that forms fastest is the product that happens at the site that is less substituted so when you compare these two sites this is a secondary carbon this is a primary carbon. This primary carbon is less substituted than the secondary carbon. And because of that, I'm able to say uh, that this will be my major product where the bromine adds here to the primary carbon. And then this is going to be my minor product where bromine adds to the secondary carbon. 
Now let's look at a an unsymmetrical alkene that's a little bit more substituted, right? So I have site one and site two. Site two is in green, site one is in red. Notice this is a secondary carbon. This is a tertiary carbon. Alright? And so I know that if I uh abstract from site two and propagation, this is the one product that I'm going to get. Alright? The question is what happens when I abstract from site one, which is at this red hydrogen? What is product two? Alright, and before we get into talking about what product two is, I want you to notice that this is secondary, this is tertiary. These two methyl groups are pretty big uh, when you talk about abstracting this hydrogen in propagation. Alright, so remember in propagation uh, for allylic bromination, this MBS uh, in initiation breaks up, gives me a bromine radical. That bromine radical is now going to abstract at the allylic site either here or here all right so remember bromine is really big that's one thing you need to remember and another thing is this the reaction for allylic bromination always occurs at the more readily accessible site so this site is more accessible than this one and so this product is going to be major and then now let's look at what product two is but before we do that let's think about this in terms of one of my favorite movies, Robots, all right? And I have here too much junk in the trunk, all right? So Aunt Fanny, if you remember Aunt Fanny from Robots, she got her name because she had a, a large uh, derriere or posterior, or whatever you want to call it, all right? And so on this molecule, these two methyl groups are blocking the way for bromine to come in and abstract this hydrogen, right? Remember, this is less accessible this is more accessible so if big well here is bromine and he wants to come in and grab this hydrogen here notice what's in the way all right ain't fanny is in the way all right so that site is blocked and because it's blocked right the bromine can't get in there as easily and take this hydrogen off I'm not saying it can't come off but it's just not as easy all right How you live in let's think about it in a more technical term right this is easy right these two hydrogens here are the two hydrogens on the other side of the double bond they're in green this is easy right down here this red hydrogen is the hydrogen that's at site one that has those two methyl groups blocking this is much harder right and so when you think about the reaction this abstraction is going to happen a lot more uh, rapidly than this abstraction All right, so what is product two? We, you might think that it would be this, where you just abstract, you make the, the uh, radical here, and then put bromine here, but that's actually not the case. This is product two. And I know what you're thinking. Where the heck did this come from? This looks nothing like it's supposed to look. All right, but first, let's look at what happens. All right, let's say in propagation, we do abstract this hydrogen, which we will, and we come, this is the radical that we expect right so from this radical we expect bromine to just add here and give us the product that we saw before this product right but that's not what happens this radical actually rearranges to give me this radical now what I want you to notice is that here this double bond is uh, di substituted meaning it has two carbon substituents attached to it this double bond over here after the rearrangement notice the arrows I'm taking one electron from this double bond this one electron here I'm making a new double bond here and then I'm taking one elect the other electron from the double bond and putting it here onto carbon alright this double bond is di substituted this double bond is tri substituted it has one two three carbon substituents attached to it alright and then this is the actual this all this happens in propagation this happens all right once I'm here I'm able to terminate by just adding a bromine radical and then get into this product all right so I want, want you to think of this in terms of romps all right when does the allylic radical rearrange right romps rearrangement occurs when obviously in parentheses more possible stability all right so I'm going from a di-substituted alkene to a tri-substituted alkene 
the more substituents the double bond has, the more stable it is. And so I think of it, think of this in terms of this acronym RUMPS or this mnemonic. Rearrangement occurs when more possible stability. Right? So if I'm able to take this double bond and rearrange it to get a more stable double bond in the product, then the rearrangement is going to happen. And then just remember this is just resonance. There's nothing special, there's no magic that's happening here. This is just resonance. All right, so let's recap. Allylic bromination is a way to synthesize alkyl halides. We've already talked about that. Allylic bromination of unsymmetrical alkenes occurs faster at the least substituted site. And then rearrangement, we talked about that just a second ago. It occurs if a more stable product is possible. So if you have questions, you can catch me here. Tweet, email, or drop by the office. All right, peace.